But listen, I want to get right into the Word, and I'm going to show some testimonies in and things that are happening. But why don't you open your Bibles quickly? I want you to open your Bibles. Anywhere's fine. It's all anointed. But we're going to, first off, we're going to put up 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. We're going to put that up there. We're going to read that together. Then we're going to jump over to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. And I tell you, God is going to touch you greatly today. You are going to be encouraged. Hallelujah. And I want you to put something, uh, something else very deep in your spirit. You, God, I have never seen an individual. I have never seen a ministry. I have never seen a, a church that has ever done anything great and significant for God that hasn't on many occasions faced impossible circumstances. In fact, I believe that's the qualification for greatness. You got to come up against some impossibilities. But the Lord loves to set you up so that he can be the one to get you out. Are oh, y'all hear me? <laughs> I tell you, I feel fire. Woo! Let, let. Hallelujah. I tell you, he loves to set you up. See, see, if you get overwhelmed when the impossible comes up, then, then you're just not quite ready for greatness. But I think we got a church here that's ready for greatness. So the moment the impossible circumstance comes up, you just begin to celebrate, put on a little Holy Ghost dance. Say, oh, God's about to show up. Oh, God's about to show up. I said, oh, God's about to show up. Why? Because grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the revelation knowledge of God and of Lord uh, Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given unto us all things. Someone say all things that pertain to life and godliness. So listen, let Born come on up here. Born, uh, man, I just get, we, whoo. Somebody say, God, the God of the impossible. So now, Boren and Ashley are getting married on Friday. And this crazy, radical, Holy Ghost on fire, believe God for the nuts things, man of God. They are, they're getting married, and a few days later, they're taking their honeymoon as a, and their honeymoon is a missions trip to Nicaragua. Now, I want to do a little setup because uh, a couple months ago, he got invited to a very private, by invitation only meeting with uh, Reinhard Bonnke. Training world level evangelists. And somehow the Holy Ghost said, I got a world level evangelist being raised up in the upper room. So I, I, I'm going I'm to let you get to the other story, but you got to stand up here for this one. So, so he just, he, somebody then rose up and said, I'm going to pay for your whole way to go because it was, a, it was, it was a, a couple thousand dollars. Then he couldn't get, he had lost his wallet, lost his license, couldn't get a passport, couldn't get, and I mean, it was literally down to the last day. It looked like it wasn't going to happen. Suddenly found his license, was able to get the passport. I mean, hours. Before the plane fight, got up there, got God connected him. It was only a small group of 120 or so, right? Yeah, and God connected him, and he was up there and just getting breakthrough after breakthrough. The last day was the day of impartation, laying hands, the anointing to lay hands. <laughs> and everybody's praying, and Reinhardt's laying hands the last verse, and all the other teachers or people are coming through praying, and they get down, and he ends up, he's just sitting way up front, but they end up starting in the back corner. So he's just waiting patiently the whole run. So he ends up being the very last one to get prayed for. And, and all the other people pray for him. And then he's standing there, and Reinhardt doesn't come by. And then, so finally he opens his eyes, and Reinhardt, something's happened to him, and suddenly he fell ill. And so he left. They took him. They took him away and carried him out. And so Born was like, well, all right, Lord, I receive, I receive. And he said, what? He said, no, Lord, no. I did not fight through all of this. 
to get all the way up here in Canada to not have the man of God lay hands on me. <laughs> so he said, I'm going to stand. I'm going to sit in front of the hotel. They've all left the hotel the, where the, the meetings were at. I'm going to sit here. You're going to bring one of his leaders to come back to this hotel and pick me up and take me to wherever Reinhardt is. So he sat there for two hours. When one of the preachers, one of the other main preachers, had forgotten, had just so happened to have forgotten something at the hotel. And he comes, <laughs> he comes back and Warren sees him and says, hey, can you get a message out to one of the other guys and, that he had, he had written next to uh, Daniel Kalinda? Can you get it? And here's my number. You know, and can you get it connected? And the guy said, all right. I'll, 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 and he told him what happened. He said, all right. And then the guy goes in. He comes back out and he says, wait a minute. You, you just come with me. And he took him to the restaurant where Reinhardt's privately eating. And he got to sit right there at the table with Reinhardt. All right. So I'm sitting there hearing this story. I'm all blessed by faith and favor. Somebody say faith and favor. Okay, so that's a couple months ago. Now they want to go to the mission trip. They're $3,000 short to be able to go to this mission trip. Tuesday was the deadline. What happened on Tuesday? <laughs> the other deadline on Tuesday was for, I mean, it's crazy. The apartment and the deal we were getting, we had to, we had to get the deposit in that day. And so, like, Tuesday was just, like, a brick wall day for us, okay? Three o'clock in the afternoon, I get a phone call. And it, I haven't heard from this guy until this point. It was the guy, the leader that, that took me to see Reinhardt that got my phone number. He says, he says hey, is this boring? I'm, I'm like, yeah. He tells me who it is. I'm all excited. Well, he says, you know, the Lord's been really speaking to me the past few days, and he's been saying that you need something. <laughs> and he says, and the Lord really impressed me right now to call you. And by the way, I was, I was between classes, okay? I, I would not have answered the phone if I was in the next class that I was going to. He said, the Lord told me to call you right now. What do you need? <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I'm not even going to mention the, the, you know, the apartment stuff. I need three grand today, and I'm like, that's too, that's too big, you know. I, I don't know what to ask, but then I was just like, you know what, why not? And I said, well, you see, I'm getting married November 1st, and immediately after that, my wife and I will be going to Nicaragua on a missions trip. And um, basically, I need $3,000 by today to be able to go. Well, the interesting thing is this guy owns his own oil company. And he says, well, that's very interesting because the Lord told me to call you right now and ask what you need. And so I'm going to give you $3,000 to go to your missions trip. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> and then just to... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm waiting for a shoe to hit me in the face. <laughs> and just in case you didn't have icing on that cake, he says, I'm going to go ahead and throw in $1,000 as a wedding gift for you personally. So they were able to not only get to miss the shit, they were able to get the apartment. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Somebody say, we have grace. See, grace is the favor of God. It's the favor of God. I said, it's the favor of God. Woo! So, Psalm uh, 5, verse 12 from the uh, English Standard Version says this. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. 
See, we've been, uh, there's so much teaching out there at Grace, and I call it greasy grace and, and a false grace message, and it really is. It's all about almost a lot. It's hyper-Calvinism taken to an extreme. But that's, that misses the greatness of grace. It is this favor of God, favor with God, and favor that God gives us with people. Woo, glory to God. Someone say favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, I'm so stirred up in my spirit because God's about and is beginning to release a supernatural anointing of favor upon you. Favor with man. Come on. Favor with man. People are going to come to you and start opening doors for you that you never even expect. I, I got to preach prophetically here a little bit this morning. Come on. They're going to come. You don't even know why they came to you. They show up at your doorstep, and they're going to say, God has led me to you. God told me. Come on. Two months. They've never talked. God told me, call you today. Oh, by the way, I'm a millionaire. I can take care of your need. Somebody say favor. favor. Say it again. Say favor. favor. Shakara Shakara. I tell you, a spirit of favor. Woo. <laughs> Psalm 90 verse 17 says this. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Psalm 84, verse 11 says this, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Say it again, say favor. Now, I want to read a couple verses from Psalm or Proverbs chapter 3 and put this very deep in your spirit because we have faith. Oh, glory to God. Everything in the kingdom of heaven operates by faith. You know, one thing I've learned about here is I, I've watched. Have you ever watched somebody move in a certain anointing and it stirs up your faith to believe God for that? It happens to me all the time. I get around people that are super incredibly prophetic and it rises the prophetic up in me in another level. I get around people that, that believe God for signs and wonders and miracles and it stirs that up in me more. Huh? And I tell you, I, I, I get around people that have supernatural favor on them, and I say, oh, Lord, my, I'm expecting that. Well, I tell you, one of our, 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 our dear partners in this ministry and friends, Bishop Jeff Larson, is probably a man that has one of the greatest favor anointings on him I've ever met in my life. Now, I've been with him. It is like crazy favor. Someone say crazy favor. So... <laughs> He's, he's connected like you can't even imagine. And the things that just land into his lap. Even this week. I mean, a business person flies in this week. Well, and literally lands a business opportunity in his hands. They fly in just to give him the opportunity. Doesn't cost him anything to get in it. And then they start blessing him and setting him up. And it's absolutely amazing. It's going to help a lot of other people get work and make a lot of money, but it's going to bless him tremendously. And they sought him out. Someone say favor. Well, in this group was a gentleman. Oh, this is good. In this group was a gentleman who happens to be, who's a man of God, got saved, radically saved, man of God, and, but he's got incredible favor in the business world. I mean, even with Hollywood and, and corporate types and Jewish community. In fact, they, the world has nicknamed him the Reverend of Revenue and the Economic Evangelist because he just walks in and preaches the word and says, this is what the Bible says you need to do in this business situation. And they start listening to him and they start making money because how many know the word works? Come on, somebody say the word works. And so... <laughs> So, <laughs> all right, let me read these scriptures because this is so good. L listen, listen, Prover Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to tell you about this guy in a moment. My son, do not forget my law. Everybody say his word. Stop being afraid of the word of God. 
Don't be afraid of the law of God. You're not under bondage, but there's power in it. But let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth. Let not mercy and truth. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. You got to have both. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Someone say, I'm going to find favor. So, to Thursday, I come in and I'm getting ready to start class. And I get the notice that we are facing a major battle here in this building. The landlord drops a notice on us and says, December 1st, I'm raising your rent 50%. 50% because he wants us out because he already figured out he could divide it up into little cubicles and make more money. He's told us that straight out. Now, when we got in this building, it was only a third full. He was going bankrupt, and we bailed him out. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Four times he couldn't pay payroll, and we paid extra early to bail him out. But I'm not worried about all that. Are y'all here? So I get hit with that, and I go to my class. I tell my class, I said, now, listen, I'm not worried about it. I said, God's going to do something. I said, what? God is going to, I don't know what he's going to, but God is going to do something. I said, besides, I've been feeling in my spirit, it's time to get our own building. No more limitations. No more three miles for all of our elderly people have to cry out. Come on, somebody, amen. Uh, no more, no more. We need, we need to make noise in the morning. Prayer room, 24 hours. It's time to get our own building. So right after my class, this bishop shows up with this reverend of revenue. <laughs> this economic evangelist. And he, walk, he walks into my office, and immediately he notices a little flyer I have there. And the flyer is a flyer of Moore Cirillo. Now, for those of you that are newer, don't know that Moore Cirillo is my spiritual father. He's preached to only, only Reinhard Bonnke has led more people to the Lord than Moore Cirillo in the nations of the world. And phenomenal man of God. I had a little flyer. He picked it up, and he started staring at it. I said, oh, that's my spiritual father. He said, what? He said, August 15, 1998, I got born again. And then when I went back to my bed, when my, my apartment, the Lord visibly, the bright Shekinah glory of God, and God visibly appeared to me. Jesus told me, he said, I was a good Catholic boy. He said, I want you to forget everything you ever thought about me. He said, I want you to get a red letter edition Bible. He didn't even know what that meant. He said, and I want you to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John over and over again until you see what I'm really like. And he said, this glory light was filling my room. He says, after the experience, my neighbor came to me. My downstairs neighbor came to me and said, what happened to you upstairs? He said, well, I, I can't talk about it. She says, listen, I know God did something for you. So she got on the phone, 1998, and dialed more Cirillo. The day he got saved and put more Cirillo on the phone, and he prayed and prophesied over him for 20 minutes that he would be used by God in the nations of the world and all these things, and everything more Cirillo prophesied has come to pass. And so, and he says, I have never met him. And I have prayed for 25 years that God would connect me with the right person to introduce me. I said, well, he's my spiritual papa. I said, I founded his youth ministry. I'm one of the few guys in the world that go to around, have gone around the world and preach for him. And he's like almost in tears. He's like stumbling. Pastor Al was there. He was like stumbling. 
He said, oh, this is a God connection right here. So then, now we're talking two hours after I hear this bad news. So then we show him the sanctuary, and we're sitting right here. And he looks over at me, and he says, so, Steve, what do you need? I'm sitting next to a man who just signed contracts with Dish Network and DirecTV to have his own network, his own whole television network that would be teaching biblical principles on teaching God's people, teaching people how to make money God's way. And they, uh, y'all hear me. Uh, and so my mind, just like born, my mind thought, well, you know, I just need a little help to deal with this thing. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I am not. I said, listen, I got my eyes on 15 acres right down over to his street here. I need $1.6 million for that. I got my, I already got a set, a 40,000 square foot building. I need a prayer room. I need, a, I need, I need this, I need that. It's going to cost me about $4 million to put up. So I need $5.6 million now. Now, I don't know if he expected me to ask for that, but I was going to ask for it anyways. Come on, you have not because you ask not. So then I got him in my car, and I took him over to the land, little point of contact. You say, well, what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen, but I got the, rev the reverend of revenue who walked out of that meeting and said, we have got to do something. And all I know is he turned to me and Pastor Al, and he said, I want you to know, don't you be concerned about this situation. We, you got some help backing you up. Hey! Hey! Okay, so that's Thursday. Somebody say favors coming my way. So then Friday, we're aware we, we, we know about only know about this man. He was the admiral, one of the top admirals, if not the admiral in the original Gulf War. Okay, high, high level retired man, connected to governments and leaders. Born again believer, loved God, but connected all over the world. His assistant is on the phone Friday night and happens to be contacting, once again, Bishop Jeff. And now I'm telling you that Henny Sitzer, now these guys are connected to massive governmental things, massive economic things. I mean, huge. We're talking levels that most of us couldn't even dream of. And he said, I. He said, you know your pastor, Steve Foss? And Bishop says, how do you know where I go to church? He says, we know all about your pastor, Steve Foss. He's the heir apparent to Moore Cirillo. And I'm hearing, I mean, Pastor Al calls me up. He says, I've got to put you on a conference call. You have got to hear this. I'm sitting in the parking lot ready to eat dinner, and I'm like, well, how did they know who I am? Somebody say favor. Say divine connection. It just so happens one of the things the admiral did after retirement is they, he actually happened to pilot the private plane that Mor Cirillo used when he did his mission to Indonesia. Now, you, I mean, no, you have no, this admiral is in charge of things that he was appointed by President Bush. I mean, these guys are connected all over. Anyways, they know all about us. They're connected. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
Oh, I didn't tell you about this economic revenue. I didn't tell you about the other part. He sat in my office and he said, listen, I've got relationship with Rick, Rick Warren. I'm connected to Joel, uh, Joel Osteen. He said, he said, I, I'm connected to these guys. He said, but they don't have what I need. He said, I'm here looking for a spiritual covering. Now, now listen to me. You say, why do you share it? Someone say favor. See, stop thinking like the world. Do you understand? Stop thinking like the world. Stop thinking, well, i got to have the biggest amount of money, and I've got to have the biggest this so that people are drawn to me. That's how the world thinks. But there's a lot of people that are not looking for somebody that has big stuff in the eyes of the world. They're looking for somebody that has big stuff with God. They're looking for somebody that has favor with heaven, and they want to connect to that. You, you see, why would these people come to me? Because they recognize when you pray, there's answers to your prayer. They recognize you've got a glory of God upon your life. And they say, I don't care what you've done in the natural world. I'm not impressed by big business and big money. I'm impressed that you know how to get a hold of God. Hey! Come on, because economies are going to collapse and economic systems are going to come down and governments are going to fail. And there's a world going to be looking for people that know how to get on their knees and how to tap into the glories of God to get an answer. That's why you're going to get favor. I said, that's why you're going to get favor. Come on, I said, that's why you're going to get favor. So yesterday, <laughs> I, so yet yeah, now Saturday, day three, <laughs> I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm there and I'm supposed to be preaching at this conference and they are late. Everything's running late, sound tech problems uh, uh, running late. I am three Hours late from getting up to preach. Three out, and I'm just sitting there at peace. Pastor, he's, he, he said, oh, we'll be up in about 10 minutes. I said, is that Mexican time? <laughs> he said, yes. I said, all right, I'll be, I'll be ready in about an hour. <laughs> but I'm supposed to be up preaching when in walks this man. He said, I, I, he, doesn't live in, he doesn't live in Houston. He had heard that I was going to be in town. I've never met him. Don't know who he is. He drives, uh, he's on the other side of Houston. He drives all the way over. And only with the drive, he's only going to have maybe 20 minutes and has to turn around and go back out to fly out. He rushes over. I was supposed to be preaching at that time, but I was delayed. So they bring him in to the back. He introduces himself. Pastor Carlos, he says, I am the head of the Hispanics, uh, the entire Hispanic department for the Christians, for the support of Israel, for John Hagee. Not only that, I'm the head of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Coalition. And between the two groups, I oversee 15 point Five million believing Hispanics in America. Now, don't be worried about me sharing a lot of testimony. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And so he said, I drove over here because I, 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 I had to meet you. Me? I had to meet you. So we start talking and start sharing, and I start sharing about the discipleship course. He says, and he laid out the seven-point plan they have for helping Hispanics in every area, spiritually and naturally. He said, the one thing we're lacking is a good discipleship course. He was so excited. He, he went out, and they, they, they let him, because he was there, they had him speak for about three, four minutes to the people, maybe five minutes. And he spent half the time said, I just met Dr. Steve Foss in the back. He said, I could have, there's an anointing on that man. I could have talked to him till midnight. <laughs> Gave me his personal cell number. He said, you, we got to connect. We got to hook up. There's something going on here. Somebody say favor. Yeah. You 
say, what's that all that for? I don't know, but God is setting you up. I said, God is setting you up. Shakara by Sunday. I can't, there was another one, too, I can't even tell you about. I don't have time. Oh, my Lord, just say favor. Now, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Look at this. Woo! Shikara <laughs> by Sunday. Shikara by Sunday. Shakara Baba Hande. Shikara Mama Shahande. Ho! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's given you favor with Him, and when you have favor with Him, you're going to get favor with man. Now, I didn't say every man's going to give you favor. But even some of your enemies, are, are, they'll, be right, they'll be mad at you, and they'll give you favor. I'm resisting a bunch of things to say. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. I want you to start walking around not arrogantly but confidently. I got the favor of God on me. You don't have to be bold or brash. You just know that you 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 know. That you know. I'm going to go in the store. I'm going to get favor. Huh? I'm going to deal with a business transaction. I'm going to get favor. If someone tries to fight me on this side, God's going to give me favor over on that side. Hallelujah. He said, favor's a shield. Oh, my Lord. Come on. He said, favor is a shield. Someone say, it's a shield. Favor is a shield. It will protect you. Woo. He will. And the Lord will cover you with, cover him or cover you with favor as with a, as with the shield. So when the enemy comes against you. You know that you got favor. Someone say the grace of God. Now see, the grace of God, the grace of God is this amazing gift of God. But I am not going to presume upon the love of God. And I'm not going to squander the grace of God by using it as an opportunity to feed my flesh. Come on, amen. The grace is too good. Come on, it's too good. It's, it's too, someone say it's too good. Come on, I'm not going to use the grace of God to feed my flesh. I'm going to use the grace of God to feed my spirit. Come on, I'm not going to use the grace of God to try, just, try to stop, just try to stop feeling guilty. I'm going to use the grace of God to stop being guilty. Some are going to help me out here a little bit on that one. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to use the grace of God to slip into the bed chambers of darkness. But I'm going to use the grace of God to enter into the throne room presence of my king. And I'm not going to use the grace of God to find out what I can get away with. I'm going to use the grace of God to find out how to get away from. It's the favor of God that gives me access to the power of God for everything. Someone say everything. Say it again. Say everything. And I'm going to pray for you this morning that God, as he has given you favor and access to his presence, you begin to see the manifestation of favor with man. Favor with the banker. Am I talking to anybody here? Favor with the boss. Woo. Favor. Woo. It's time we start expecting it. Now, now listen, you're going to be, you're going to have opportunities where someone is going to open the door for favor. And you're going to face just what Boren face. You're going to face with me. Well, I just don't want to ask for so much. Well, I just don't feel right. Well, excuse me. It is God who opened the door. Come on, amen. Well, well, well. What do you need? Well, I just don't really need nothing. No. Be bold. Be strong. You have not because you. I remember sitting down with a great world famous man of God. Because I've, I've wrestled with that. I've had, a, I've had to fight that at times. You know, oh, no, no, no. I don't, I'm going to ask. And he sat me down, pulled me aside, gave me favor. Sat me down at for breakfast and he said Steve you need to be aggressive about asking for help from people that got it and I said and I, I said well I, I have a hard time with that he said I know that's why the Lord told me to tell you 
Come on, y'all hearing me? Because sometimes, well, we shouldn't do that. Wait, you got favor on you. Now, if you're trying to do it on your own selfish lust, that ain't going to work. But that ain't people from the Upper Room Church. People that come to the Upper Room Church are hungry for God. They want to see the lost saved. They want to see bodies healed. They want to see devils cast out. They want to see a world reach. They want to walk in the favor of God to see the kingdom advance. That's why you're here. Come on, am I talking to anybody here? That's why you're here. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Yeah, you're going to get your touch, and yeah, you're going to get healed. But you're here to do, be more than about yourself. You're here so you can be a, a, a force of change everywhere you go. I favor, 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 favor. I just saw it. I just looked back. I saw a new level, a dimension of favor coming upon you. Oh, my Lord God. Oh, my Lord God. Favor's coming all over you. Favor in the business world. Favor, call it God connections. Favor. The things you've been battling, the things that have been standing like a barrier before you, they're leaving right now. Leaving right now. Leaving right now. Leaving right now. So the walls that seemed impenetrable are going to become like paper before you. Oh, Sunday. Sunday. I see it, I see it, I see it. I see it, I see it, I see it. I see it, I see it. I see it, I see it. Favor. Jesus. Come on, this is not about a wind-up message. This is not about a putting on a Pentecostal preach. This is about you walking in the divine covenant of God with your life, that you are anointed by God to have favor. It'll go before you. It'll protect you. It'll knock down walls and barriers. It'll open up things that didn't seem they could open. It'll close doors that the enemy tries to come through. You got favor. Favor. Somebody lift your hands and give them a shout of praise. Woo! Jesus, Jesus. Sit down, sit down, you crazy folk. Somebody say favor. Woo! <laughs> see, see, this is why we teach about Obeying the commands of God. This is why we teach about a radical living for God. You got people out there that are so trying to get people to stop feeling bad. You're not to be able to feel bad. There is no condemnation. I said there's no condemnation. But they're doing all the time saying, well, you don't need to listen to the Bible. You're not. That's the law. You don't need to obey this. You can do whatever you want. Don't feel bad. But what they don't understand is when you're walking in the wickedness of the world, you shut off the fountain of favor. Come on, somebody, y'all hear me? Listen what the word says. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. How many want peace? Obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. You want peace? Obey the word of God. Come on, you want, you want turmoil in your life? Disobey God. Am I talking to anybody here? Y'all know that to be true. Come on, you want turmoil in your life? Start lying, start cheating, start stealing. <clears throat> Come on, start looking at pornography, start cheating on your wife. You want turmoil? Hello, somebody. Shh. Let that, well, I forgive it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, I want peace. He said, let not mercy and truth. You got to have both. Now, that's, now, now, you got to have both, man. You got to stand for truth. You got to believe for truth, but you got to be radical in mercy. Come on, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. But we also, I, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Hallelujah. He said, write them, write the word on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. But you know that word best translated, in all your ways, know him. 
He said, hey, hey, all you got to do is know who I am and you're going to be all right. Just know my nature. Know my character. Know the way I love you. Know the way I love, oh my Lord. That's why beginning next week, we're going to go into an unbelievable, probably the greatest series we've ever gone in this church on the Father heart of God. It's not going to be just teaching. It's going to be an experience. You're going to experience the love of God like you've never known before. The love of the Father, Abba, Father, Daddy, God holding you in his arms. Huh? Woo. That's the first thing I learned in my Christian experience. But I, I, I've come to realize so many Christians have not experienced what I experienced. The reason I can handle the fear of the Lord is because I know the love of God. Come on, the reason I can handle pursuing holiness is because I already know the love of God. Come on, I know my Father loves me. I know He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I know He's chasing me down. He's wrapping me in His arms. I know He's looking at me and there's a twinkle in His eyes. I know the thoughts that He has for me are more than the sands of the sea. I know my name is written on His hand and He gazes down upon it every day. Somebody say, favor with God. In all your ways, know him, and he shall direct your paths. Hallelujah. He shall. You're just going to follow the word of God, and your paths are just going to be directed. You, you won't even think you're walking in the right way, and you'll end up in the right place. You'll think the enemy came and knocked you off course and realized that God just used him to redirect you to the right place. What the enemy meant for evil, God. I said, God. I said, God, I'm turning around for good. Devil's going to sit back and say, I can't attack him anymore. Because every time I hit him, they land smack dab in the middle of the will of God. Woo! I just going to say, <laughs> devil's just going to say, I'm leaving him alone. Woo! Do not be wise in your own eyes. <laughs> Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Why? It will be health to your flesh. I'm in Proverbs 3, verse something. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Do you know obeying God will heal your body? Are you all hearing me? It will heal your body. It will heal your body. Mm. Honor the Lord with your possession. And with the first fruits of all your increase. Because what you honor is drawn to you. What you dishonor goes from you. I'm going to say that again. Come on. What you honor is drawn to you. You want to get. Let me just drop this bomb. You want to have favor with people? Learn to honor. Come on. Huh? You start treating them like they're a nothing or a nobody. You start taking them for granted. Then you, when you dishonor somebody, you distance yourself from them. But if you learn to honor, if you'll obey the word of God, if you'll honor those to whom honor is due, God will then give you favor. Oh, somebody, somebody right here needed that. Well, I just, I just think, I just think. No, you just don't. You ain't thinking right. Come on, honor. Someone say honor. Ooh, glory to God. Because if you put somebody on your level or you put somebody below your level, that's all you'll ever get from them. But if they got something that you need, if you honor them, it'll open. And that's why we honor the Lord. Someone say we honor the Lord. So your barns, <laughs> your bank accounts will be filled with. Somebody say plenty. Somebody say plenty. I don't know what your mind of plenty is, but my idea of plenty is not enough to get through next week. My idea of plenty is I don't have to think about it. My idea of plenty is the barrel is so full that when I take a big scoop out of it, I didn't notice anything went down. Are oh, you preaching one of that prosperity gospel? Yes. I'm, 
I'm preaching the gospel. And he says, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yeah. I'm not talking about naming and claiming and blabbing and grabbing. I'm talking about flowing in the abundance of God with divine favor, with God and with man, so the kingdom can be advanced. And your vats will overflow with new wine. Someone say the anointed. (laughs) My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. God will spank you sometimes. He's not spanking you because he hates you. He's spanking you because he loves you. I don't know why this idea that if God ever disciplines his people, he's a hateful, mean, vengeful God. He's a loving God. What loving parent wouldn't discipline their child to protect them from the junk they're doing? One of my favorite scriptures when our kids were young, right out of Proverbs. Beat them so they shall not die. Get him over that lap. Remember those words of your father saying, Son, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you. I, I said, Son, I'd say that, but it's a lie. It's going to hurt you. But I'm waiting for that cry to turn from the cry of being caught to the cry of brokenness. Come on, sometimes we have the cry of the consequences of our sin, and then we get the cry because we had sin. Are y'all hearing me? And sometimes we got to get that place where that cry changes. It's no longer, oh, I feel bad because of the consequences of getting caught. But, Lord, I just feel bad because of what I've done, God. I'm going to change my nature. So your boy. No. <laughs> Man, I'm dropping bombs all over the place. (laughs) Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Wait, 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 what are you saying? I'm saying when God spanks you, he's delighting over you. Because if he didn't like you, if he was mad at you, if he was hateful towards you, he'd just let you go down the path of sin and destruction. Because he knows the end thereof is death. He'd just turn you over to it. The worst thing that ever happened to you is God stopped dealing with you. The moment you stop feeling convicted, then you need to get worried. But as long as the Holy Ghost is saying, oh, no, no, do that. Oh, well, look out for that. Oh, no, no, what? Wait, I told you, stop. Bam. As long as God's dealing with you that, you could just say, hallelujah. He loves me and he delights me. But when you feel fine living like the world and it don't bother you no more, you better be uh, uh, concerned. Woo. Hallelujah. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Notice he talked right after being spanked. I'm just saying. (laughs) Come on, sometimes come on, sometimes you're spanked by the word, sometimes you're spanked by circumstances. Come come on, somebody, amen. You know, I just shouldn't I I know I know Lord you said God give me I, I know you what your word says, how to deal with certain things. And Lord, you know, when I got in there and fleshed out and it caused all kinds of trouble, I'm getting spanked by my circumstance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I do that a lot. And the man who gains understanding, happy is the man who finds wisdom, and the man who gains understanding. Everybody say understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gains than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Hallelujah. Riches and honor. Someone say the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray for favor. I pray for favor. 
I pray for favor. I pray for favor. Come on, begin to pray for favor right now. Come on, begin to pray for favor. Favor with God and favor with man. Favor with God and favor with man. Jesus. Listen, somebody, I want you to understand, God never intended for you to live on this earth without favor. Whew. Never intended for you to try to do everything that God has called you to do without favor. Hallelujah. My whole ministry has been covered with favor. From the favor what God gave me when he came and visited me when I was a drug addict and alcoholic. And he came and he rescued me and he changed me and he pinned me to the floor for 40 minutes. And I heard what sounded like a choir of millions singing an indescribable song. And he instantaneously delivered me from five years of drug addiction and alcoholism. He began my life of favor. Then he started connecting me with people. And I, I didn't beat on the doors. I didn't try to push my way in. He started giving me favor. And he gave me favor with more Cirillo and opened the door. And I started their youth ministry. And he gave me favor so that they opened the nations and said, you go to the nations and preach on his behalf, more Cirillo's behalf. And he gave me favor. And the first meeting I did in Africa, I was the number three speaker. I was a little afternoon preacher. But the two main preachers couldn't even get on a plane. They, their, their planes were canceled five days in a row. So I became the the keynote speaker and by the end of that meeting they never even invited those men again I was the guy that they sent all over Africa why God gave me favor I didn't never had the biggest ministry I never had the biggest youth group are y'all hearing me I never had the most money I never was the most charismatic I never had the best looking body I didn't have the biggest background I didn't have a family history that I had a famous name but what I did have was favor And I faced many battles and many giants, but I had favor. Come on, somebody. And just when it looked like it was going to come down, God would set me up with favor. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you're not dependent upon your gifts and you're not dependent upon your education. You're not dependent upon your ability to figure it out in yourself. And if you just get under the divine favor of God, look out. God will open doors that cannot be opened and shut doors that you didn't think could be shut. Because God is giving you favor. Somebody say, I want favor. I need favor. Now listen, listen, sit, 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 sit. So then why would I ever do anything to shut the fountain of favor? If I obey the word of God, it keeps the flood tide of favor going. If I walk in disobedience, it shuts the fountain of favor. I don't want to shut the fountain of favor. This is not about God loving you. That's been done, settled. He loved you when you were a sinner. So he definitely loves you now. This is not about God being willing to forgive you. That is been done, settled. Jesus paid the price that if you repent, you'll receive forgiveness. But this is about operating in the favor of God. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you obey me, you'll walk in my favor. You obey me, you'll walk in my favor. I'll give you favor with men. You do it my way. If you treat people the way I tell you to treat people, it'll give you favor. If you honor those that need to be honored, I'll give you favor. If you bless those that curse you and pray for those that despitefully use you, I'll give you favor. Oh, if you love on people as I love the church, I'll give you favor. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. If you care one for another, I'll give you favor. If you forgive, I'll give you favor. If you honor me with your tithes and your offerings, I'll give you favor. If you treat people honestly in business dealings, I'll give you favor. If you turn the other cheek, I'll give you favor. If you're honest in all your words, I'll give you favor. If you love your wife as Christ loved the church, if you're honored, you'll keep yourself pure, I'll give you favor. I'll give you favor not only with me, but with man, I'll give you favor. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, 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 that's why, oh, yes, Lord, your grace is enough. Your grace, your favor is enough. We're going to walk under divine favor. Say it after me. I'm going to walk under divine favor. I'm going to walk under divine favor. Say it one more time. I'm going to walk under divine favor. I'm going to walk under divine favor. Let me read this scripture to you one more time. Then we're going to receive the tithes and offerings here this morning. Then I'm just going to pray a prayer of favor. Oh, I feel the authority of God. God. Now, I, listen, I know some people don't understand it because they're trying to remove the divine processes of God. But if you'll study the Bible, it's consistent. The anointing does not flow from the toes up. The anointing flows from the head down. That's why we're spending so much time investing in our men in the upper room church. Because if we can get the men under the anointing, It'll flow down to their wives. It'll flow down to their children. Come on, come on, amen. That's, whoo, glory to God, glory to God. That's why if you'll notice something, listen, many of you have been in churches and you've been frustrated because you're saying, where's the breakthrough, where's the breakthrough? If the anointing and the favor isn't on the head, it won't flow through the majority of the body. I'm not saying you individually can't tap into something, but that's how it flows. That's why we do so many things with leaders around the world. Because if we get the leaders under the anointing and under the glory and under the favor of God, it'll flow to the people. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 512. I've read it a couple times. I'm going to read it again. For you bless the righteous. O Lord, you cover him with favor. As with a shield. I want you to picture that in your mind. I'm going to be covered with favor. Woo! Hallelujah. Shakarama. It's a shield that protects me. Hallelujah. No matter how many times the enemy comes against me, the favor of God is a shield. Someone say, the favor is my shield. Say it again. The favor is my shield. The favor is my shield. 